Hello ladies and gents, and today is the feast day of St. Clement, who we see here. St. Clement was a disciple of St. Peter the Apostle, and was ordained Bishop of Rome, or Pope, in the year 93 AD. By legend, Clement was martyred by being tied to an anchor and thrown into the Black Sea, which led to his adoption as the patron saint of sailors. The dedication of St. Clement is unusual in London, with only one other ancient church there dedicated to this saint, namely St. Clement Danes in Westminster. And what better place to explore on St. Clement's feast day than the church of St. Clement Eastcheap? Also another little famous link to this church is, it is the church from the song Oranges and Lemons at the Bells of St. Clement's. Now, this church has only really recently opened back up again as a functioning church. A year or so ago it was being used as the headquarters of a charity and anyone that's been on my page long enough will know that I tried many times to get in this one right from when I started the page. This is one that I've been wanting to do. And because it's opened up as a church which is open at 4.30 on Thursdays and Sundays it does a lot with young people and things like that so this is how I was able to get into this one but a church was first recorded on this site in the year 1106 that church was then rebuilt in the 15th century and that church was then in turn destroyed by the Great Fire of London that church which was destroyed by the Great Fire of London was replaced with this one that we see which is a Sir Christopher Wren Drobby uh, built between 1683 to 87. It's generally regarded as a plain and simple church for a Wren church, but its interior is a little bit special, shall we say. So, these are some of the pictures of the exterior. And now you're going to join me inside for a tour of this lovely church of St. Clement's on St. Clement's Day. East Cheap as well, in the area where we are, was one of the main medieval thoroughfares and shopping areas. Cheap comes from the old Saxon word meaning a market. So it gives you a link as to what the area was. Being fairly near the Thames as well, you can imagine it was all hustle and bustle. So join me inside the church for a tour of this lovely old one. It's been a brilliant day today and I've waited a long time for this one, nice evening one. St Clement East Cheap from Oranges and Lemons said the bells of St Clement's, this is our church. So, in we go. Look up there, look, that's brilliant. He's cheap made as well, that clock. And the, um, this is obviously a, after the Great Fire of London Church. And all the woodwork is uh, pretty much original to the church itself from Wren's time. It's 
St. Martin's, oh yes, the Church of St. Martin's, August, which until 1826 stood in Martin's Lane, Cannon Street, was dedicated to St. Martin, Bishop of Tours, who died A.D. 379. It was presented by Orderus the Dane to the canons of St. Paul's Cathedral in A.D. 900 after the fire of London. The parish was united with St. Clement's near East Cheap, and St. Clement's Church became the Church of the United Parishes. Brian Walton, the learned and famous author of the Biblia Polyglot, was one of the rectors of St. Martin's. He was consecrated Bishop of Chester in AD 1660 and was buried in the crypt of St. Paul's Cathedral, of which he was a canon in 1661. This plaque was raised in 1872 or 3. And what better day to tour this church as well than St. Clement's Day? Is the high altar, which I'll show you now. And unlike many of the uh, Wren churches, it's, as I said, it still retains a hell of a lot of original features. This one, ah, excellent. You can see that one through here, then, hopefully. Poinder, I've seen that name before. St. Martin. Perfect, obviously, for St. Clement's Day. Feast day of St. Clement is today. Not a good day for explorers today, I must admit.
gilded wooden ceiling. And you've got the pulpit just there. Take that away for this. Look at that, looks like a distressed face, doesn't it? I wonder if they did that kind of thing back in the old days. And here, just above there, look, you've got the royal, the royal arms. It would have hung in any, every uh, church of England church. Peace inside there. I hope that was dust rather than an orb. Hope you all enjoyed that one. Thanks for watching. Oranges and lemons set the bells of St. Clements. Sorry about that, but this is part of the video. There we are. We are at the Church of St. Clements East Cheap or St. Clement Danes. And where begins the song of oranges and lemons set the bells of St. Clements. But more of that towards the end of the video. This church is always closed, always, even on a Sunday, I've never known it open, about 12 or 13 times, so yeah, but it's got one of the smallest churchyards in London, a couple of tombs remaining and uh, two gravestones, two or three gravestones, anyway, I've been in and checked, so here we are, so I've been in check this one then I saw the church of St Edmund the King and the Martyr was open so I dashed and did that one quickly and I've come back here so in we go guys and girls for a little tour of London's smallest churchyard or one of its smallest churchyards in we go and in we go to London's smallest or one of its smallest churchyards And I've got my eye on another church today. It's been closed dozens of times and I think it may be open. So welcome to the churchyard of St. Clement, St. Clement East Cheap. The church that gave its name to the song Oranges and Lemons. Uh, that song didn't originally start like that. You will see more of that towards the rest of the video in memory of 
Mr. John Poinder, late of this parish, who departed this life the 11th of April 1800, aged 48 years, also four of his children who died in their infancy. So yeah, you've still got these box tombs and that's about it really. It goes round to there, which goes under to the church and ah, there's another stone here. We'll have a look at this one. To the memory of Mrs. Mrs. Hannah Raven, who departed this life November the 5th, 1810, aged 56 years. And there's another one here, which I didn't notice this one before. Sacred to the memory of Mrs. Sarah Lee. Oh, that's interesting. I've got Lee in my family, who departed this life. February the 8th, 1816, aged 74 years. Also, Mrs. Jane Lee. Sorry, not Sarah, Samuel Lee. Samuel Lee. Also, Mrs. Jane Lee, wife of the above, who departed this life. September the 18th, 1822, aged 55 years. Also, Sarah Lee, daughter of the above, Samuel and Jane Lee, who departed this life the 20th of March, 1848, aged 48 years. So, yeah. So, you see the outside of the church visited our little first part of the nursery rhyme and it didn't start off as a nursery rhyme for a children and it didn't originally begin like that so more of that now hope you all found this little snippet interesting take care all see you in the next part of the video hello ladies and gents and excuse any background noise because I am actually sitting in the churchyard of St Clement Danes or St Clement East Cheap while making this mini video bit while I have a smoke. Um, you've seen the first bit of the video. And this is the origins and meaning. The first recorded version of oranges and lemons certainly didn't begin as oranges and lemons. And what you're going to see is it now. That began, two sticks and an apple ring ye bells of Whitechapel. Old father bald pate ring ye bells of Aldgate. Maids in white aprons ring ye bells of St. Catherine's. Then oranges and lemons ring ye bells of St. Clement's. When will you pay me ring ye bells at Old Bailey? When I am rich ring ye bells of Fleet Ditch. When will that be ring the bells at Stepney? When I am old ring ye bells at Paul's, which is St. Paul's. And you're going to hear that version now. And now for our historical look back. Of course we'll show St. Clement on his feast day again. And this is St. Clement's East Cheap, as it would have looked pretty much new when Wren put the church up. The rebuilding of London, as you can see, there isn't very much around it at this time, but it was quickly encroached upon by other buildings. We see it here in circa 1760 uh, from Walter Harrison's 
History of London, 1777, an engraving in St. Clement's East Cheap. It hasn't really changed that much at all, the church over the years. St. Clement's East Cheap in 1805. Here we see it in 1830. Nice little watercolour image this. It shows Clements Lane and the buildings around. All completely more or less swept away and new buildings now or newer buildings. This is it in 1831. Looking south. An engraving by Thomas Hosmere Shepherd. Clements Lane, the small thoroughfare on which the church is located, is named after the church. And Martin's Lane, looking north at St Martin's Auger, a lost London church. And this is when this church was lost, It was its parish was twinned with St Clement's East Cheap. So I wanted to show this one because they are twinned together and it is a lost London church as well. Um, another engraving by Thomas Hosmer Shepherd. And I hope you've all enjoyed our tour of St Clement's East Cheap on St Clement's Feast Day. Thanks very much for watching everyone.